All right, question four is another illustration of the fundamental theorem of line integrals, and it's actually a problem we've already solved. This uh, question four here is problem number six from the last section's worksheet. Okay, and this solution here is a really, really good illustration of the benefits of using this potential function approach, um, at least when it's available. Okay, so the question says the force exerted by an electric charge at the origin on a charged particle at a point x, y, z with position vector r, which is x, i plus y, j plus z, k, is given by this vector field e, which is k times the position vector r divided by this scalar r cubed, where k is a positive constant, and r here, the scalar, is just the radial distance from the origin out to your point. Okay, our job is to find the work done as the particle moves along a straight line from the point 200 to 215. Okay, so in the last section, we parameterize this line segment and then use that parameterization to compute the corresponding work integral. All right, so now what we can do is use a potential function and the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So the work is just going to be the line integral of our vector field E okay, along this straight line path from uh, the point 200 to the point 215. And since we know a potential function for E, this is actually back in uh, section 15.1, we, we weren't looking at uh, E specifically, we were looking at the, uh, the gravitational uh, force and there, it was really the same field. It was a radial field that obeyed an inverse square law. So really by the same argument, this uh, function phi here, which is minus that constant k divided by this uh, scalar r, this, this radial distance. If you, if you take this uh, function's gradient, you can easily show that it's equal to this vector field e. And again, we did that back in 15.1, okay? so. All we need to do now is evaluate our potential function phi at the point 215, our terminal point, and then subtract from that the potential function phi evaluated at our initial point 200. Zero, zero. Nothing to it. Now, uh, if I plug in 215, Okay, this is going to give me minus k divided by the radial distance from the origin out to this point 215. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of the sum of the squares of these coordinates. So that's going to give me the root of 30 in that case, because it's 4 plus 1 plus 25. And then I'm going to subtract from that phi evaluated at 2, 0, 0, and that's going to be minus k divided by, you can see this point is just two units away from the origin, so that would be just 2 there, okay? And if I go ahead and pull out the k, then I get this result. I get k times the quantity 1 half minus 1 over the square root of 30 which is exactly the same answer that we got in the last section, of course, but this is a heck of a lot easier. Okay, the last part here says, what can you say about the work done by the field E in moving the charged particle between these two points along another piecewise smooth oriented curve that lies in R3? Well, there, as long as we stay away from the origin, notice, the vector field is not defined at the origin, but as long as we were to stay away from the origin, we in fact can take any path we want between these two points. And if we compute the corresponding line integral, which will tell us the work done by the field in moving a charged particle uh, from this point to the, uh, this point, our answer will be exactly the same, right? That's really, really amazing and very powerful, right? That we have this independence of path because of this uh, potential function here. All right, well, that's going to do it for this problem. Thanks.